When you first start Emacs, you should get a window that looks something like this. The exact window that you have will depend on the version of Emacs you're running, the operating system you're using, and even the windowing toolkit that you have. But if it looks completely different than this, then it's possible that you already have a .emacs file. So to fix that, press Ctrl-X, Ctrl-C to exit Emacs and move your .emacs file to somewhere else so that Emacs won't see it and will assume that you're running it for the first time. Now for the purposes of this video I'm going to use a different font so that the text is easier to read. I'm going to use uh, Deja Vu Sans Mono and uh, size 14 which should be a little bit easier on your eyes. Now, I could walk you through the basic Emacs movement commands, but I think you'll get more from going through the built-in Emacs tutorial. And conveniently, Emacs has put the cursor already on the Emacs tutorial line so that all you have to do is press Enter. I challenge you from this point on to not use the mouse at all. Just ignore the toolbar and the menu at the top of the window and stick to the keyboard. It might be a little bit frustrating at first, but in the long run, you'll end up being able to use Emacs a lot faster. So go ahead and pause the video and work through the tutorial right now. And welcome back. Before continuing any further, I want to show you how you can learn more about Emacs from inside Emacs itself. All of the help commands inside of Emacs start with Control H, and the first one I want to show you is Control H I to bring up the info directory. You'll usually find that, especially for GNU projects, the information in info is more comprehensive than what's in the man pages. Notice that this first paragraph contains a hint for if you're new to this, it says type M followed by Emacs and then return and that takes you to the Emacs manual. I'm not going to bore you by walking through the entire manual with you but I am going to point out one section of it that's this meta x command. Instead of using M to jump to one of these items you can just move your cursor over it and press return. Meta x is important because if you don't remember the key combination for a command or if the command doesn't have a key combination, this is the only way to run it. Using it is sort of like bringing up a command prompt. You press meta x and the cursor jumps down to the mini buffer at the bottom. I don't actually want to enter a meta x command right now, so I'm going to press control G to quit. Then to get back up to where we were in the manual, I'll press U for up. Sometimes you don't want to go up, you want to go to the last page you were on, and you can use L to get there. Now, I happen to know that Emacs comes with some games built in, so I'm going to press Control S to search, type in games, and then press return to end the search. And the menu item is called Amusements. I just press Control A to jump to the beginning of the line, and I'm going to press Enter to look and see what's inside. Yes, that's right. Emacs comes bundled with games inside of it, which is part of what gives it its reputation for being an operating system or an editor with everything, including the kitchen sink. Whatever your opinion is on that, let's just make use of them to help practice. So here's a chance for us to use meta x to run a command. And I don't want to type in the whole animate birthday present, so once I've typed in a few characters, I'll press tab and it completes it for me. So now I'll press return to run the command, and it's prompting me for something else, presumably a name, I'll use my own. And now we have a birthday message, and then looks like a poem, which is not the sort of birthday song I'm used to. But that's not much of a game, let's try a different one. 
So I could try pressing U or L to get back, but they're just putting the characters on the screen. And the reason for this is that we're not in info anymore. If you look at the mode line, this line here, there's a fundamental listed, and that means that the mode of the buffer we're in is fundamental. And all that means is that this is a vanilla text editing buffer. If you look a little bit more to the left of the mode line, you'll see the name of the buffer here, a present for Yekor, and it's surrounded by asterisks, which means that this buffer is not tied to a file on disk. It's a temporary buffer, an in-memory buffer, whatever you want to call it. But all we care about right now is it's in the way of getting back to the info that we were looking at before. So let's get rid of the buffer with kill buffer. And if you didn't know the key for this, you could use meta X like we did before and try searching kill and use tab completion. And eventually you'll see kill buffer listed. But this is a pretty common operation and I want to do it with the keyboard shortcut. So I'll press control G to quit this command, then press control X and then K for kill buffer and it prompts me for the name of the buffer and I'll press return and we're back in info. So let's take a look at the next game listed, Black Box. Black Box is a game similar to Minesweeper in which you send rays of light into a box trying to determine where the balls are inside of it based on how the light is reflected or deflected. But you might be looking at the screen thinking all I see is a bunch of dots and some text about four balls in a box. So let's figure out how to play the game. One thing to notice here in the mode line is that instead of being in a fundamental mode, we're in black box mode. And you can think of that as meaning that this buffer, black box, is running the black box program. So to get information on the black box mode, we can press Control H for help and then M for mode. Let's switch to the other window with Control X O for other and then scroll down to see uh, some information on the keys we can use. So we can use the usual movement keys to move around the box and space either sends in a ray of light or toggles a ball at a point or one of those dashes. Return ends the game and gets your score. Notice that there is a message here to learn how to play back black box. See the documentation for function black box. And just like in the info mode earlier, when you see something underlined like this, you can usually press return to follow it like a hyperlink. So feel free to read this uh, explanation of how black box works. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the window and show you a little bit myself. So we can move around and then if I press space here, it sends a ray of light into the box and it gets deflected and comes out here, meaning that there's probably a ball right here that it's bouncing off the corner of. Let's try sending in another ray of light. If this ball is here, we should get a hit coming back, which we did, indicating that it directly struck a ball right in the center. And we can send in some more rays of light and see that you know, somewhere along this column is another ball. Uh, if we send one in here, somewhere along this column is another ball. So it's probable that there's one here. If we get a hit here, uh, we didn't. We got a deflection. So maybe this isn't a ball after all. Anyway, I encourage you to give the game a try. It's pretty fun, and it'll help you build muscle memory with the movement commands. Once you're done playing, you can press Control x one to return to single window mode. And then if you want to get back into info, you can just press Control h i again. If you want to go up more in info, again, it's U to go up, and you can go all the way back up to the top of the info directory. If you want to continue with the tutorial or review it again, press Control h t to get tutorial. And that concludes the basics of getting started and getting around inside of Emacs. In the next video, we'll look at how to customize Emacs 
For example, we'll change the font permanently so that I don't have to specify it on the command line. And we'll also get rid of the toolbar and menu bar at the top of the window since they're taking up valuable screen real estate that we could be making use of. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.